Yeah, man, but don't come at me with this bullshit, man. He said, I'm in the 3% club that supports Op Nation, and I demand respect, LOL. Yeah, about 3%, you right. But yeah, man. Yeah, I don't know, man. Listen, man, my job is to bring y'all the show every night. The moderators is supposed to, his is, is job is to, you know, control the chat. I can't, I ain't got time to deal with, you know, all the chat politics, man. But yeah, man. It's been, it's it's going down seventy five percent since um since that man started donating hard last month. That's a huge number, man. That's not like ten percent, five percent. Donations going down seventy five percent, and that's not just on the super chat. That's on the PayPal and the cash app. Salute to Mandy J, man. Mandy J say, take that. Mandy J in the building, man. Salute to Mandy J. Coming through heavy. But yeah, man. So, yeah, man. So, and I didn't know he was getting abused in the chat, man. That's another thing. Like, you got to understand. I can only watch the chat every once in a minute. I can catch something if I ask, if I say press one or something like that, or I, or I say, um, ask y'all a question. But the rest of the show, I'm not even on the page where the chat is on. I'm not even on the page where the chat is on. I'm on another browser or another tab, whatever I'm showing now. I'm very rarely even on the tab that the chat is on. So I never see, I didn't know he was getting insulted in the chat. I didn't know all that was going on. I didn't know none of that was going on. I had no clue. Um, None of that, man. This is all news to me, man. But I will say this, man. Um, yeah, man. I don't, I don't give a fuck about all that. Who got banned and all that shit, man? Bro was holding it down, man. I didn't know. I try to stay out of that stuff because you gotta. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, you know. You just delegate stuff, man. Smart people delegate, man. Smart people delegate, man. Smart people delegate. You don't get you can't you can't control every little thing, man. If you try to control every little thing that's going on, I'm telling you, man, you can't. You want to um the show's gonna suffer, man. The show's gonna suffer, man. If, if you're a YouTuber, you try to delegate every little thing, man. If you try to um, not a delegate, if you try to um, micromanage every little thing. So, moderators, man. I trust the moderators to control the chat, man. Thank you, guys, man. Thank you, all the mods, man. Give all the mods a, a round of applause, too, man. Thank you for to all the mods, man. Y'all are working out. Um, Shout out to Mick Crickland over there on um on a rumble, man. You know what? I I um I I'll, I'll do some new mod next week, man. Next week, man. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna make a couple new mods, man. Next week I'm gonna let the I'm gonna let the moderators. We gonna we gonna do a poll, man. Next week we are gonna do a poll, man. I'm gonna let the moderators nominate. Remind me next week. I'm gonna let the moderators nominate four people for mod for moderatorship, and we are gonna do a poll, man. And the top two are gonna be new moderators. We could do that. You know what? We could do that tomorrow, man. Mods, man. Nominate me four people for moderator shit, man. And we'll the top two. We'll do we we'll put them on a poll, man. And we'll let the top two be the next two moderators, man. I'll give y'all some time to think about it, man. We'll do that tomorrow, man. Uh, salute to the racial attack, man. A racial attack, man. Um, 1966. 1966. Brooklyn. This was in Brooklyn in 1966. Racial attack here critically injures five. Five white teenagers were critically wounded last night when they were attacked in the Bushwick section of Brooklyn by a group of Negroes armed with knives and machetes. The five were among a group of about 20 white youths standing in front of a pizzeria at 799 Knickerbocker Avenue at about 10.30 p.m. When the Negroes raced down the block and began slashing at them. <laughs> According to the police, witnesses reported there had been about six Negroes in the group. A fire alarm was pulled and a squad car was sent to the scene. But by the time it arrived, the attackers had fled. And the five wounded boys lay on the ground. <laughs> on the sidewalk. A long kitchen knife and a machete were recovered. The wounded youths were taken to Wyckoff Heights Hospital, where they were listed as in critical condition. A Roman Catholic priest was summoned to the emergency room there to give last rites to some of the youths. <laughs> the police said the tax took place about two hours after the group of whites and Negroes had had an angry exchange of words in a nearby Halsey Park. The Bushwick section is a racially mixed area that is run down in parts, but that is not considered to be a slum area. There has been some antagonism between white and Negro youths vying for dominance in the neighborhood. <laughs> They're vying for dominance, man. What do you mean vying for dominance, man? You can't even look a white person in the eye, man. White people running around calling you boy, and you talking about vying for dominance. <coughs> That's the shit I don't understand. White people are calling you boy, and you talking about vying for dominance. I'm vying for dominance. Salute to LRLRS. Maga maniac in the building. <laughs> but unlike the East New York section, Bushwick has been no has no history of racial incidents. After last night's attack, the streets were quiet. However, 20 extra patrolmen were called in. They were assigned to stand in pairs at the intersection around the spot where the attack took place. Occasionally, a squad car would pass with a white youth, presumably one of the witnesses, riding next to the policemen as they searched for the suspect. <laughs> so you got the white, the white kids riding around with the police searching for the suspects.
that don't sound like no racial issue, man. The 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 the, the, the whites is like, hey man, find these guys, man. They attacked us. It don't sound like no racial game, man. The white people guys. The wounded boys were identified as Jace Joseph Szczynski, 17 years old, James Riley, 17, Thomas Lord Lawler, 17, George Bauman, 16, and Michael Mizretta. Mm. Man, you son turns to something else, man. You son turns to something else. Negroes armed for whites. Dateline, 1888. Dateline, 1888. Okay? 1888. This is early. This is early, man. This is early, Jack. This is 20 years after slavery, Jack. 1888. This fresh after slavery. This like, damn, like. Yo. Yo. It's early. Salute to Run DAZ. He said, just stopping in to say hi to the chat. Best chat, best nation. Thanks, Op. Salute to Run DAZ, man. Dateline 1888. Durham, North Carolina. Durham. Negroes armed for whites. They commit crime at Durham and threaten further trouble. On Wednesday, the Negroes at Durham, North Carolina, feeling aggrieved at the activity of Caleb Green, chairman of the county executive committee, made threats against him. And that night, his residence was burned to the ground. Let me just let me let me drop the link, man. I'm gonna let y'all get some of this, man. <laughs> My God, man. My God. They were mad at the county commissioner or something. They just went and burned his house down, you know. And y'all say that they're worse now. Listen, man. Y'all say that blacks are worse now? No way, dude. No way, dude. No way, dude. No way. No way. They were worse then, man. Hot black in the building. What's up, hot black? Yeah, your yeah, evidence seems to suggest that things perhaps were worse than we thought. 
Yeah. I mean, think about it, man. You upset with the commissioner. It doesn't say what they were upset about, but it doesn't. But the fact that they don't say what they were upset about gives you, makes you think it wasn't something egregious, you know? It wasn't something enough to put in the article. Because back in those days, the article was just the facts, you know? And it, I mean, it could easily be something like, you know, a rowdy teen was being, you know, detained by a an officer at Musket Point. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I can't help but laugh, right, when I'm reading these stories and it's like the exact same shit that we read today for the most part. I, I disagree. I think it was worse. I mean, I don't think the modern need A lot of the causes, I mean. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. I think, like, there's no f fucking, like, armed Negro militias, you know, threatening and, and mean mugging on the edge of town. At yeah. least yet. Right, and, and they're not going to have an issue with the county commissioner and then just go burn his house down. Now, don't get me wrong, they'll protest outside of his house nowadays over some like BLM bullshit or something like that, but nah. This is different. Yeah, they were different back back then. I mean, they were um it seems as if like it's almost it's almost like a being in a bizarro world. Cause it's like, yo, we were told the exact opposite. It, it's like that for a lot of things, I guess. But yeah, this in particular. Eighteen eighty-eight, too. Wednesday, the Negroes at Durham, North Carolina, feeling aggrieved at the activity of Caleb Green, chairman of the county executive committee, made threats against him. That night, his residence was burned to the ground. The Negroes broke into the construction shop of the railroad company and gained possession of one hundred dynamite cartridges. Christ. They have openly made threats against certain other citizens, chiefly election officers. Much excitement prevails there. The large tobacco warehouse houses are under guard and guards are at the residences of the threatened citizens. The election was peaceably held, but sufficient polling places had not been provided owing to the rapid growth of the town and the 160 Democrats and about 200 Negroes failed to vote before sunset, the closing time. Okay, so they didn't put enough voting booths out for the Negroes. The Negroes are mad because they didn't have enough voting booths. Yeah, and to they be fair to the Negroes, um, there was a you know significant amount of real voter suppression at the time you know, in this reconstruction period in the South, but like, we've always been told that, you know, they went to the polls and they, they were told, you know, get out of here, Sambo. And, and, you know, they just ducked their head and said, shucks and walked <laughs> off, you know, and, and, and were oppressed and disenfranchised. No, man, they fucking created a militia, 200 dudes and burned the town down. <laughs> yeah, they handled it. They didn't, they didn't take it lying down. Um, any agreement. Um, 1890. Race Warren Barnwell. Washington, D.C. Okay, this is Washington. This is, this is no, no, that's the Washington paper. Okay. Um, this was in the, the <laughs> was in the Washington Post. <laughs> um, Barn. Berg. Okay, so this is actually Barnberg, Bamberg, South Carolina, 1890, July 15th. News from Curses, a town in Barnwell County, where the race trouble occurred some months ago, is to the effect that there is more trouble between the races. The man just in from Kansas states that over 300 Negroes armed with Winchester rifles had gathered and that serious trouble was anticipated. One Negro had been killed 
and several of both races injured. At 9 p.m., a white militia company left this place for the scene of the trouble, and the whites will be reinforced by those from the surrounding counties. No causes no cause is assigned for the trouble beyond the bad blood between the races caused by the riot some time ago. So, so you think they uh, purchased all these Winchesters legally or stole them out of carriages? <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know, but they all got guns. So I, it makes me think that they might have gotten them legally in, in the whole um the gun guns may have been easier to come by back in those days. This is, I think, is this the old West they're talking about? Or? <laughs> oh, this is South Carolina. I mean, it's about as east as you can get. <laughs> yeah, man. But like? maybe you know, maybe it's some goddamn carpet baggers that brought them down and, and armed them. <laughs> yeah, man. You I mean, know, what you white say? liberals. <laughs> what can you say, man? I mean. Yo, they're just, I mean, we're talking about, like, we're not talking about punk shit here, man. We're talking about literally, um, we're talking about literally, let me put a poll up. I want to ask you guys um, a question. But we're talking about, um, we're talking about, like, a, this type of behavior is not like small. We're not talking about like they're going out there with picket signs. They're going out there with guns. They're burning people's houses down. They're marauding through the streets. It, you don't even need like social media back there to spread the word. Like I, was, I always wondered how did blacks mobilize back in those days with no on the Pony Express? Well, they just all gathered up and went downtown with their guns. And everyone knew because they were downtown with their guns yelling and burst up. But, you know, in most history about this period, you you would be, like, shocked to learn about that this is a common thing because all you ever hear about is, you know, when it happens in the opposite direction. Yeah. I mean, it, it is crazy, man. In these stories, in this, I mean, like literally, every town, every week, every day, like there's never. I remember CA sent me, a, like, a collection of these stories, like a hundred of them, and I could never get to it, man. But it was like, yo, blacks were so bold, man. He's posting Those... new ones of these every day. It seems like, <laughs> or you know, every week at least. Goddamn. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, man. Um, let me finish. Uh, uh, let's see. What, what would the modern era be? The modern era would be 1968 to, to the present. Let's just say that. All right. Um. Everybody hop on that poll, man. Everybody hop on the poll, man. Um, let's see. Let's do one more, man. Um, before we get into tonight's activities, let's see. Um, Are these a different group of Mexicans than the other day, or is this the same story? No, this is this is Spencer's Railroad. The That's the same story. story. Yeah, that's the same story. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. Here we go. We got, a, got some a real lynching. Okay, good, man. Let's see. That was, now we get to see 1900. This is the year 1900. Turn of the century. Wow. Hot Fire says, I've been following you on and off for three years. I, I donated here and there. But I became more active last month when I found out you had a little one on the way. 
I've been blessed financially, and I want to support the real. Salute. Man, salute to um salute to the bro hot fire, man. That's that's touching, man. That, that means a lot, man. Appreciate you, bro. Um salute to hot fire, man. I, I I had, you know, I, I didn't I didn't um I wasn't aware of your um I wasn't aware of your, your work until recently, man. But uh yeah, salute to you, bro. Two Virginia lynchings, whites hang Negro and blacks dispatch his white comrade. Killing of the white man may lead to a race war. Negroes said to be armed. No way. Emporium, hmm? Oh, I'm shocked. <laughs> Emporia, Virginia. It's a little town. It's still a little sleepy town of Virginia to this day. March 24th, 1900. Two lynchings have taken place in the county today. Walter Cotton, a Negro, the confessed murderer of Justice of Peace Saunders. So this guy who confessed to the murder, but they're going to say he was coerced. So you got I, taken out by it. Walter Cotton. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta take that, um, take that confession with a grain of salt. He was coerced, man, like the Central Park Five. Um, and another, and a man named Welton, on Thursday, was hanged and riddled with bullets by the indignant white citizens of Emporia at twelve o'clock noon. A few minutes later, a telegram was received from Greenville, stating that O'Grady a white man who was with Cotton at the time of the murder had been lynched by the colored people of that town. Mm. So a lynch for a lynch. And two, we, they, well, how they do the Chicago on the whites are up one, man, the score. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so again, this is a bit different than what we've been told. Yeah, we up one, man. Um, <sighs> two men have been, two black men lynched by the whites and one white man lynched by the Negroes. Great excitement had resulted. And as the state troops have been drawn to Richmond, more serious outbreaks against law and order may be expected. The action of the Negroes in, of Greenville in lynching a white man has aroused the entire country, and the neighboring towns are aflame. The whites are talking of proceeding to Greenville and dealing with the Negroes there, according to the rules of the South. The Negroes are said to be armed and prepared for any attack that may come from their white brothers. State troops were sent here from Richmond by Governor Tyler on the demand of Judge W. Samuel Good, to whom the whites had made their threats of lynching the Negro. Major Hutchins was in command of the Richmond Light Infantry Blues. This morning he wired Governor Tyler for more troops, but before they were started, he wired back saying they would not be needed. The sheriff having said he could handle the mob without military aid. Meanwhile, the people of Emporia held a mass meeting in the judge's office and passed resolutions protesting against the presence of the troops, although it was acknowledged that the lynching would take place as soon as the troops were gotten rid of. The order for withdrawing the troops was signed by the judge and the sheriff. At, um, at, set, at whatever o'clock, in less than an hour time, the Negro's body was swinging from a tree in the courtyard, riddled with bullets. Wow. So they they, they told me. Huh? Yeah, we don't need you. We don't need the we don't need the um the troops, man. We got these, we got these Negroes under control. They thought, huh? They thought, man. <laughs> 
Oh, <laughs> the hubris. <laughs> they sent they sent the troops back. <laughs> well, let's just Negro. Don't worry about it, man. As soon as you, you know, then, yeah, man. Uh, Governor Tyler said tonight concerning the double lynching, I feel that I have done all I can in the matter. The civil authorities stated that they can, could handle the mob without military assistance. When the sheriff ordered Mayor Hutchins, Major Hutchins to just depart there, was nothing left for him to do but go. I am greatly distressed at the result, but I could not keep the soldiers there without declaring martial law. And I did not feel that the prevailing conditions warranted that. The law in reference to such matters will, I presume, be carried out. The men who took part in the lynching will or should be arrested and dealt with accordingly. Oh, so they're going to arrest the white people who lynched them. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, I think, did you profess a an inclination towards, like, like the rule by law in this case previously? I can't remember it's like a fine line, you know, there are benefits to this kind of behavior, I guess, but like, ultimately I don't feel like, you know, free child lynchings are a good idea. Yeah. It can land you in the big house. It seems like, um, like, so this all started when the sun man killed the justice of the peace or whatever. Right. Um, yeah, he, the sun man is actually, it actually is two, two, because, the sun man killed the white, the justice of the peace. So yeah, it's too, too it's, it's not too right. And then, and then they <laughs> strung him up and shot him up, right? And so the the colored town, you know, retaliated in kind, basically. So it sound, you know, he didn't get a trial, right? I mean, at least get a trial, convict him of that, and then string him up. In my book, yeah. Um... Let's see what's going on today, though, right now. Let's let's swing back into the modern time for a second. Um, wow. Um, I don't want it to be too swayed to that sway. Um, this happened a few hours ago. A man shot and killed after a carjacking on the 1200 block of 3rd Street, northeast, at 7, 18 p.m. So look out for a black male, thin build with dreadlocks. Last seen occupying a great Chrysler 200 bearing DC tags GR3248, which is the victim's vehicle. Police say it was random. So this is downtown Washington, D.C. This is like five blocks from the um, MCI Center or the Cap whatever, the, whatever they call it, Verizon Center, whatever the, whatever the capitals and the Wizards play. This is downtown. Like, it's like literally like a bustling metropolis and this guy this this thin dreadlocked sun man killed the guy and took his car right there and the random guy it's never let's an extreme what, of the stuff let's see what the 